let's work out the Kelly criterion. Kelly criterion. So this is a way to size your bets when you're playing a game and you have an edge. So let's consider you know, blackjack. So let's call the fee eyes are going to be the outcomes of each hand. So fee equals negative one, that'll be a loss. We lose whatever we bet. Fee equals zero, it's called a push. The money will stay on the table for the next hand. And fee equals one will be a win, we double our money. And then these fees will have some statistical properties. We'll have some mean and standard deviation. So this is our mean mu and our standard deviation sigma. Okay, now we have a starting bankroll, B naught. This should be our initial bankroll. And in the Kelly criterion, we assume that we bet a constant fraction of our bankroll at every hand. So we'll call that F. F will be the, the fraction to bet each time. Now let's try and figure out what our bankroll is going to be after M hands. So after M hands, we start with B naught. Then after one hand, we get some result. So here's the expression we multiply by B naught to get the, the result after one hand. So if F is zero, if we didn't bet anything, this is just one, we just keep our, our bankroll the same. If F is one, we bet everything, then depending on what uh, uh, fee is here, we either go to zero times our bankroll, we go bankrupt immediately, or this goes to two, in which case we double our entire bankroll if we bet everything. All right, then after another hand, we get some result. And finally, we get up to the mth hand, and we're done. So here's the value of our bankroll after m hands have been dealt. And we can simplify this a little bit by saying it's the product of 1 plus f phi i for i from 1 to m. So this pi notation just means a product of a bunch of factors. OK, now let's look at the growth rate. So let's call the growth rate G. G is going to be 1 over M times log BM minus log B naught. So this is the definition of growth. So this is the growth over the M hands and then dividing by M just to keep it normalized per hand. Now let's substitute in. So this will be log of b naught times the product of 1 plus f phi i, i from 1 to m, minus log b naught. And now I have a product of factors here inside a logarithm. So the log of the products is the sum of the logs. So I can move these around a little bit. This will be log b naught plus, and now here I have a product of the factors. So the log of the product, it'll be the sum of the logs. That'll be a, a sum from 1 to m of log of the factors. And then minus the log b naught. These cancel out here. So we have our, our growth rate. Now let's look at expected growth rate. So here, if we actually have all the phi i's, we can figure out the growth rate. But we actually have the statistical properties, not the actual values. So we want the expected value of g. What's that going to be? That's going to be 1 over m times the expected value of the sum of i equals 1 to m of the logs. And so there are m terms here. And 
they're all drawn from the same distribution. So we can actually simplify this a little bit and take this m out, and that's just equal to the expected value of the log. So our expected growth rate is the expected value of this log. The next step is to Taylor expand. And so log of one plus something, we can rewrite that. So let me write that. So log one plus X is approximately um, X minus a half X squared plus dot, dot, dot. Cause log of one is zero. And so the expected value of log one plus F phi I equals the expected value. And so I do this expansion here. It'll be F phi I minus a half f squared phi squared plus you know some more stuff so this is about equal to the expected value of f sigma i minus a half f squared expected value of phi i squared and so this is what's the expected value of f times phi i so that was our, our mu was the mean, so we get f times mu minus a half f squared, expected value of sigma i squared, that's the variance, so we get the variance here. And there we go, now we have the expected value of the growth. So this is the expected value of the growth equals f mu minus half f squared sigma squared. Next step is to solve for F to maximize E of G. So we're solving the fraction that we bet each hand to maximize our expected growth of our bankroll. So how do you maximize a function? You take the derivative, set it equal to zero, make sure it's uh, curved the right way. So what's the derivative? So if our derivative, so here's the function, what's the derivative with respect to f? It's mu minus half times two times f sigma squared, set that equal to zero, solve for f. So we have mu equals f sigma squared, so f equals mu over sigma squared. We'll call that f star to be the, the Kelly criteria fraction and our expected growth at F star is what? It's F star mu minus a half F star squared sigma squared equals, so mu over sigma squared times mu minus a half mu squared over sigma squared uh, to the fourth. This is the f star squared sigma squared. So that's mu squared over sigma squared minus a half mu squared over sigma squared. And so we just get a half mu squared over sigma squared. All right. We've now found the fraction that maximizes our expected growth and what our expected growth is. So this is the, the fraction to maximize growth. And here's our expected growth. So pretty cool. So we, we need to know how our edge works. So let's let's go back up here. So what were mu and and sigma? These are our mean and standard deviation of our outcomes. And so we want mu to be positive. We hope we have a positive edge. 
And then if we do, we can use this fraction here, mu over sigma squared, and that will maximize our expected growth of our bankroll. And let's draw a little diagram here, a little plot. So if this is F, if we bet zero, our expected growth, so let me, this will be, the expected growth of our, of our bankroll, if we always bet zero, we're gonna get zero. At some point, we'll maximize. We actually get a parabola pointing down like this. And so here, somewhere here will be the Kelly criteria optimal. And that'll be our, our F star. And you can imagine anywhere from here to here is reasonable because here we have no growth and no, no volatility. As we go more towards the Kelly optimal, we increase our expected growth, but we're also taking on more risk. Our bankroll is fluctuating more. As we go from here to here, we're being stupid. We're, we're over betting because we're betting a larger fraction than we need to to get the same expected growth. So we're having more volatility in our bankroll than we, than we need to. And then eventually, by being stupid about our betting, we, we come to no expected growth. Even though we have an edge, we have no expected growth of our bankroll because we're betting too much. And then if you bet way too much, you have a negative expectation. Even though you have a positive edge on every bet you make, by mismanaging your money, you can have an expectation that you will lose money. So this is really important. If you don't understand this, you can make good trades and still go bankrupt. So this is good stuff to know.